Hi, I'm Wouter from Triply, and this is the first episode of my Sparkle tutorial. In this Sparkle tutorial, we'll take a look at what a Sparkle query is and the different forms of Sparkle queries there are. So, Sparkle is the standard query language for querying linked data knowledge graphs. It's a little bit similar to SQL, but SQL is of course used for relational data, whereas Sparkle is used for graph-shaped data. That's already a little bit of a difference. And Sparkle also has another distinction from, say, the more traditional SQL paradigm, in that Sparkle queries do not only allow you to query one database, but Sparkle queries also allow you to query multiple databases that are available online. We'll look into that later in this uh, in this uh, tutorial as well. Um, Sparkle is composed out of four different query languages. So it's actually four query languages in one query language. And I'll briefly go to, through those uh, four. They are the ask, uh, the construct, the describe, and the select query. So let's start with the ask query. A Sparkle ask query is a query in which you apply a pattern uh, to a knowledge graph and then the pattern returns either yes or no. So you can basically ask a yes or no question. An example is you can ask the question um, is the Mount Everest the tallest mountain in the world and then the knowledge graph will return either yes or no. As you might imagine based on this example ask queries are not always all that useful because if you ask a knowledge graph is the Mount Everest the tallest mountain in the world and it tells you no it's not then you don't know what is the tallest mountain in the world so it's only of limited purpose in practice it's sometimes used to probe for certain things so to check whether some functionality is present in a Sparkle endpoint so you ask can you answer this question with yes or no and then if the endpoint is able to you know it has some basic functionality but you would not typically use an ask query in say a production system which is ultimately what we're interested in then let's go to the second form of sparkle queries which are the construct queries construct queries are similar to ask queries in that they also apply a pattern to a knowledge graph but they are very different from ask queries because they don't return yes no answers they return another graph so that's really interesting so you have a knowledge graph that you apply a pattern to, but the result that you get back is also itself a graph. And this is a reason why construct queries are very useful in practice, because they allow you to transform an existing knowledge graph to a new knowledge graph. And data transformation is of course a very important, uh, very important task in many systems. The, uh, these uh, construct queries are often used within a linked data stack, and are not used that often, say, at the top of the stack, where the linked data has to interface with other applications. And the reason for that is that in the current IT landscape, most other applications do not know how to process this result. They are unable to process the graph structure that a construct query returns. This is maybe a bit unfortunate. It's probably also uh, only a matter of time before the construct query will become uh, uh, more useful also in the top layer of the architecture uh, because maybe in the future more applications will be able to process graph shaped input but for the time being construct queries are mostly used within the linked data ecosystem itself and not so much used to expose data to other outside applications let's go to the third sparkle form uh, the third sparkle form is called describe and what it does is it takes a sequence of identifiers, things that uniquely identify some resource, and it gives you a graph description of those resources. So for example, if you would have an identifier of the city of Amsterdam, and you would uh, put that in the describe query against a knowledge graph or Sparkle endpoint that contains information about the city of Amsterdam, it will return you a knowledge graph describing only the city of Amsterdam. So it will not return you the whole knowledge graph, but only those aspects of the knowledge graph that are relevant uh, uh, relative to the city of Amsterdam. So it gives you some form of data selection. However, in production systems, describe queries are not used all that often because the Sparkle standard does not really specify what this description should contain. 
And that's the reason why it varies a little bit between Sparkle implementations, what you can be expected to get back. And because of that, it's a less predictable Sparkle form and less used in practice. Then we go to the fourth and uh, final Sparkle form, which is called Select. And Select is by far the most used Sparkle form at the moment, and also by far the most used Sparkle form in uh, real world or production uh, systems. So what a Select query does, it's very similar to Ask and Construct queries, in that the Select query also applies a pattern to a knowledge graph. But what it returns is neither a yes-no answer, as in an Ask query, nor is it a knowledge graph itself, as in a Construct query. Instead, a select query returns you a table. And that makes it very useful, because most applications out there in the current IT landscape, some of them may not be able to interpret a graph as input, but almost all of them are able to interpret a table as input, because a table is a very regular, uh, regularly used data structure. So a select query is actually able to bridge the gap between knowledge graphs on the one hand side and say traditional IT applications on the other side. You can go from the knowledge graph to a tabular form. The table is also sometimes called the view that you apply on the, on the knowledge graph. If you're coming from the SQL or relational databases background, then a view is a perfect metaphor of thinking about what a select query does. And if you don't have a background in SQL, don't worry, we'll go into this a bit uh, later as well. So these are the four forms of Sparkle queries and join me in the next episode where we will dive into our first select query. See you then.